Last time to Bono's here somewhere. Dead end. Great. Huh? You seeing this too? Take it off. Mr. Rentier, on a first date? What do you take me for? You're right. Maybe a little light to set the mood. No, no need. I see it now. Of course. The glamour. I'm on it. Good day, Chester. Please. I need to concentrate. It's not that easy to sever the illusion from its source. What's the source? You don't want to know. switch. I'll take the explosives, you get to Bono. Is this about the bridge? It's not not about the bridge. <sighs> Got the damn train, didn't I? <laughs> Share of tech architecture, but that that's something. It's hard to compete against the species that keeps on growing and advancing with their technology, creating new and more dangerous weapons of war and other engineering marvels. As I see it, the real struggle is nature versus technology. Instinct versus genius. We have allowed those naturally subordinate to us to transform themselves from prey into predators. If we don't alter this trajectory, eventually they will murder us all.
enough. Species, brothers and sisters. We are not bred. We are not born. We come to life when we accept the gift of change. Our powers are many, and they have served us well. The art of glamour has given us safety through secrecy, but I am afraid we are becoming the victims of progress. Sooner or later, Human technology will find a way to see past our illusions. They will expose and demonize us and make us their ultimate enemy. Inevitably, we will become their inferiors. Jesus, it's huge. When did they build this? And how? crash their little party. We consider ourselves proud hunters, predators, but that pride sometimes prevents us from growing as a species. Internal divisions have weakened us. Our numbers dwindle while their numbers grow, but it's not too late. We can still survive, but to do so, we must be ready to adapt. We cannot be too proud to evolve.
battles. Don't be fooled. Once our veil of secrecy is lifted, we won't stand a chance. We might be more powerful, but they will crush us with their numbers. Listen to the voice of reason. There is a thin line between... Enough. Your lines first to all out war with the humans endangers us all. Peace of Havana. Without the sheep. The wolves go hungry, yes. But the day is coming when the sheep will outwit the wolves. Haven't you been watching, brother? The humans have harnessed the power of steam and lightning. And they grow mighty. If our hubris allows us to grow fat and lazy in the shadows, they will soon have the power to hunt us down like dogs. And so you propose war. War suggests there is a chance we might lose. I propose we strike. With my new asset, we can control the change. Reclaim the Sanguisuja's rightful place at the top of the food chain. Control the change? Are you mad? Even suggesting such a thing is blasphemy. Dominic, brother, these are blasphemous times. While my methods may very well be at variance with our tradition, I can tell you one thing. If we don't adapt, we will perish. Enough! Or I will not allow you and your bastard breed to, to lead us into annihilation. Peter Davala, for the high crime of conspiracy against your own kind. I sentence you and your line to the true death. I told you, Father. They wouldn't listen. We had to try, Felicity Mikara. Our work will be a lot easier if we can help them understand. If we can't... Then... We... Force them to!
Think you could have brought a bigger knife? Some people get a gold watch when they retire. I got Susan here. <laughs> Should have asked him how to get out of here. Too late. He won't be of any use for a month or two. Wait. What about Chester? Well, what are you gonna do? Now that is how you shape an explosion. Damn, we're late. Now at least we won't be going back to the manor empty-handed. Hero. <laughs> I heard the White House sends him golden toilet paper. As long as he keeps the presidential ass clear of tick trouble. Feed him well. We've got a lot of ground to cover tonight. You're not staying for the presentation? The whole institute is in town. Ah. Uh, I'll pass on the corporate back padding session. I don't need another retirement lecture. Here, take this to your father before it wakes up and starts cursing us all to high hell. Great, so I'll just tell him you've traded killing vampires for swilling cheap bourbon? Tell him whatever you want. Fine, skip the presentation. But you ain't getting away from a final drink with me afterwards. Sweet. Good morning, sir. Can't remember the last time we gathered together in the manor. Mr. Rentier? At ease, boys. My father in his office. Hello, sir. Director Rentier spared no expense to approve those gauntlets. Officially, they called it a cholera epidemic, but truth was they were dealing with a terrible outbreak of amateur necromancy. The entire institute was engaged in the hunt.
veil of secrets. Long time no see, Mr. Rentier. From my first year of cadet training, and I'm the shortest one of the bunch. Well, the very next year, I grew like a weed. Had to buy all new pants. Mr. Rent here. You remember me? <laughs> Director Rentier sure looks edgy. Something's up. I can smell it. Some tick. Some of those family fellows were hiding out in heavy office. as That's hell. The president ordered the western border secured. Did you hear about those ones that grew tentacles? That's a first. Edgar and my father in the Civil War. Right before the bloody Battle of the Wilderness, Central Virginia. His life changed forever during that fight. Highborn nearly killed him. Badly tore up his leg. Edgar carried him in the dead of night across enemy lines to a field hospital, but the surgeon could only do so much. After that, Dad could no longer function in the field. Sir. Grave nurse with you. He sends his regards. He's afraid you'll try and talk him out of retirement again. I don't believe either of us want that. You know, he did risk his life to get this for you. That's Harrow's trinket. I'm sure you'll both be rewarded accordingly. Edgar isn't some civilian looking for a medal. This is all he knows. Your institute saw to that. My institute? <sighs> this isn't about Agent Gravener, Jesse. We are on the cusp of great progress. Great change. Today's presentation is of critical importance to the family. After which... Edgar is family. After which, I expect you to step up to your duties here at the manor. With all due respect, Director, I am a field agent, not a paper pusher. You're a rentier! <sighs> Why must you always make me spoon-feed these things to you, Jesse? There are bigger things at work here than running around in caves slaying beasts. I do believe someday soon you will see it my way. And if you don't, it's my responsibility to force that change. Now, leave me be. I must prepare for the presentation. And send someone in here to clean up this mess. Mr. Rendier, Agent Feathers is waiting for you in the lobby. Should have seen that priest armed with holy water crosses and whatnot. And that tick, he was scared stiff. I would have loved to have seen his face when you walked in with that gauntlet. <laughs> You're just in time. The presentation should be starting soon. What do you got for me this time? by the stables. He ain't coming in. I heard Gravener's finally retired.